thank you all the presenters. Thank you for bearing throughout the uh, 10 presentations. Um, now we are going to have questions, discussion session. So if you raise up your hands, our staff will bring the mic to you. Uh, I'm sorry, but now it's 2 o'clock. For the sake of our time, we are going to have our discussion within uh, four or ten minutes only. So if you raise up your hand, we are going to bring the mic to you. Okay, my... I will address my worry to Mr. Christopher Trump uh, and Joe Milgin. The first one is that he, in the, his presentation, he outlined that he used 100, he made 150 farms of IMO every year uh, to use in his farm. I want to know uh, whether he made it every year or, and if it is uh, easy for him to do this all alone or whether he used some higher level. And in my second intervention, I want to know from Mr. Joe, uh, National Farm Input Application in Swamps in Hawaii. I, I understood that Hawaii has many swamps, and I want to know whether there's any difference in the effects of applying um, using natural farming inputs on dry land and in swamps. And if there's uh, a difference, what strategies does he take to, uh, to ensure the efficiency in swamps? as well as in the dry lands. And Mr. Juju Wang from Japan, what strategies are, you, do you, are used by the natural farming movement to preserve wildlife? Thank you. for your question. Um, I do not make, uh, I, I make, uh, so it's, it's a, I have made about 70, 75 tons over the last three years, um, but I don't make that every year. And I use machines, so it's all, uh, it's tractors and uh, mechanical implements, so there's a, a compost turner. So I make the row with the materials. I use a machine to spray out my nutrient solution, and and then I turn it with a compost turner that turns the inside out and the outside in, uh, all for me. So it takes only for a uh, hundred thousand pound or fifty ton pile. It only takes me uh, five minutes to turn it. Uh, the whole thing completely and aerated. Um, and I no longer make that quantity of IMO per year. Uh, now I make small um, 100 pound uh, batches focusing on quality of IMO 3 and I use that as my inoculum to make liquid IMO. And then I spray liquid IMO on the trees and I grow it out using aeration and a tank. Over the past five years now of doing natural farming in Hawaii, we have noticed our weather and environment is, has not been the same. Our wet season has become the dry season and vice versa. Our summers have become wet. So we, our, our, our weather patterns have not been stable at all. Applying the natural farming inputs, the foliar feeds, have really allowed the plants to be somewhat stable and still be able to grow despite the fluctuations in, 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 in either flooding or in a drought situation. Uh, for myself personally, I, we, we grow in a, in, a dry, um, in a dry garden, dry farm type of area. Um, speaking specifically to a flooded situation, 
where the kalu is or a tower is grown in water. Perhaps maybe Stephen can share about his experience and um, what it's like to grow in a flooded system. Thank you. Um, we usually dry it first and then we inoculate with IMO4. Uh, let that sit for a couple of weeks and then um, we'll plant and then we will just uh, implement with the inputs. Um, and then maybe twice a month we will do a IMO, a liquid IMO too also. We will spray. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, here we have an option for uh, a, a month. The question for Ahmad is talking about the uh, uh, the tomato experiment. Okay. Uh, in your experiment, that uh, you, you show the data, the very good, uh, good data for the uh, natural uh, farming. But I have a question about this: is that uh, in your design, how do you define the uh, T1, T2, and the T3? Uh, for example, the T1 is natural science farming system. What is that exactly? And uh, what is the uh, conventional farming system? What is that uh, exactly is that? Because to me, to my uh, to my understanding, the conventional one, the uh, uh, characteristic of the uh, conventional uh, agriculture is the chemical and uh, fertilizer and the uh, herbicide. Okay. Uh, so how do you define the uh, conventional uh, farming system that you use in your experiment? Thank you very much. Regarding T T1, T2, or T3, these are the treatments which I, I used in my experiment. Uh, we can see simply uh, I use three different systems. T1 means natural science farming. For this, we didn't apply any chemical, just natural. And T2 means treatment 2, or system 2, which is organic system. We didn't apply natural uh, fertilizer, just we applied the uh, organic uh, fertilizer for that treatment, that system. And T3 uh, means uh, conventional system, uh, conventional, which means conventional is the uh, using of the chemical fertilizer, like NPK and uh, some others. Uh, this is the, the definition of the different T uh, or different system and my expert. suspended in in 1,000 liter of water. Yes, that's it. And it was, during application, it was diluted 500 times. My question is for Yun Ha Lee. There was a beautiful picture of the natural fermented feed. Is he in the room? Oh, he left it. He left, okay. Sorry. We'll go to his house tomorrow, so you can talk about it. Maybe one or two more questions from the board. Actually, I want to One or two more questions from the floor. Okay, 
Timmy Bell has an unfortunate goal on Japanese speaker. Do you have a question? Yes. In your presentation, you said you used the phosphoric acid to produce the tomato. Is that allowed in the phosphoric acid in the pickle? Is that allowed for a major farming system? And the other question is that also in your presentation, you show the disease that you used a different, uh, uh, like different agent to kill the disease. And is that, that kind of agent is that allowed for uh, natural farming or any other? Well, Hong Kong people are very Okay. Uh, my question is that the uh, uh, phosphoric acid, that it, that what, what is it? Phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid. Yeah. Phosphoric acid. Yeah. Phosphoric acid. Is that allowed for the uh, uh, natural farming? Oh, it's high level, so it's high level. It's high level, so it's high level. It's high level, so it's high level. 자연으로 인사 말을 갖고 인사 어떤 인사 어떤 인사를 줄 거냐 인사 어떤 걸줄 거예요 인사 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 he got the fourth fruit from rice bread. Guano. 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 So this one is called pure man. This is a chemical that is used for cure disease. Uh, it's not chemical. It's from the plant extract. Oh, it's not chemical. It's in the bag. It's in the envelope. It's in the bag, but it's not chemical. Now, uh, for the organic farming, it's not allowed. So, he uses all the uh, organic, no chemical. Now, we just, just one more, the last question. My question is for Marie Alai effect of calcium on potato production and natural farming? It is my understanding that the dilution for water-soluble calcium is a 1 to 1,000. However, in looking at the applications of water-soluble calcium treatments and seeing the highest potato tuber production as well as dry weight foliage for your T9 and T10, it says the dilution is between 1 to 113 and 1 to 169, which is a much stronger application than we understand. If you could speak a little bit about increasing the application of more calcium and your observations, and could you also talk about how you apply the water-soluble calcium to the soil? What volume of water and how was that applied? Okay, thank you. It's good question. My research was based of uh, I wanted to find something new because usually in nature farming everybody follows the same thing. Usually everybody is following the same thing. The nature as I studied 
the effect of calcium on potato in conventional. I found that the which volume we are using, for example, calcium 1 to 1000 dilution, it is not enough for potato production. Then I decided to compare this dilution. For example, I used 50 ppm. I analyzed this uh, water slope and calcium. I, uh, I formulated for 50 ppm, 100 ppm, and 150 ppm in the soil. It is equal to the, as you can see, it is in front of you. And also, I used 30 ppm, 60 ppm, and 90 ppm on the leaves. Then I use this same amount in the leaves and soil. As you can see, in the high concentration of calcium in the soil, increase the potato production from, in control you can see it is 25 metric ton, but in high concentration of uh, calcium in the soil, increase up to 40.7 metric ton. See the differences between production. And another thing, when we are using calcium on the leaves, potato is not able to trans the potato transportation system is not able to bring down to the potato tuber for potato tuber cell division and increasing. This was my idea to use the calcium in the soil. We can use it easily, even the, in the uh, conventional farming. Also, the researchers recommend it. We have to use water soluble calcium, chemical. We can use water soluble chemical calcium in the soil. Then we can increase the potato production. Yeah, 그래서 그 칼슘을 토양과 잎에 어, 줬는데 토양과 잎에 가장 높, 높, 높은 농도로 준게 가장 좋은 효과를 얻습니다. 그리고 칼슘 같은 경우는 잎에 줬을 때 그 토양의 그 전파가 내려가지는 게 느리게 내려가기 때문에 그래서 잎에 준 것보다는 이 토양에 직접 칼슘을 준 것이 그 감자의 수확에 가장 좋은 효과를 보여줬습니다. Water slope and calcium in the soil, and second time I increased to, oh, I used the same amount, 250, and third time I increased to 300 ml in the soil, around of the soil plant, the plant in the soil. Okay. All right, thank you very much. We're going to wrap up the question session. Now we are going to, now we're going to give some announcements. I would like to give you several announcements. Um, for those of you who didn't know, the snacks and water and beverages are prepared outside the back door. And we also have parking tickets. So after this symposium, when you leave, you can request it to the um, registration desk. And we're gonna distribute milk coupons before the group photo. And uh, we can we prepared uh, milk coupon only for those who pre-registered. So those who registered today, unfortunately, we cannot give you because we have to make a special reservation. We have to make a reservation for special menus, but um, you can still buy meal coupons uh, at the cafeteria. And I will call out the list of the names for those of you who can get the meal coupons right after this. 몇 가지 무지상을 알려드리겠습니다. 저기 다과가 물 뒤쪽에 바깥에 나가시면 준비되어 있고요. 그리고 주차증 필요하신 분들은 식권장 끝나고 등록 데스크에 문의해 주시면 됩니다. 그리고 식권을 저희가 나눠 드릴 건데요. 그룹 포토 단체 사진 찍기 전에 식권을 나눠 드릴 겁니다. 
그리고 특식권은 미리 등록하신 분들에 한해서만 드릴 수 있고요. 오늘 등록하시는 분들은 죄송하지만 어, 드릴 수가 없습니다. 저희가 그 특별 메뉴를 미리 예약해야 되기 때문에 어, 저희가 어, 미리 예약한 만큼은 드릴 수 있다는 점 알려드리고요. 그, 그래서 저희 식권 드릴 수 있는 분 명단을 지금 알려드리도록 하겠습니다. 그래서 So, um, I will call out the uh, name for those of you who can get the milk and bun. So, 10 people from, 10 guests from Hawaii. Hawaii, so we'll give it to Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris. And, 3 team, 3 team, 3 team, 3 team, 8 guests from Taiwan. We'll give it to Jian Shin Song, who is Jian Shin Song. Yeah. And Juju, Mr. Juju Wang. Yeah, Juju Wang. Dream Shi, one left. Nine guests left. Juju Wang. And Sri Lanka. We'll be doing Sri Lanka guests from Sri Lanka. Thank you. 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 Thank you.